Coming up next, we have Sujatha Jesudasan with her presentation, Speaking Race to Power as Everyday Leadership. Sujatha. So this is kind of uh, fun and stressful, so um, please bear with me. So speaking race to power, um, we live in a society where racism and white supremacy are incredibly resilient systems. Um, they happen both at the level of the individual where we internalize a set of beliefs and feelings about superiority and inferiority. Um, they happen at the level of the interaction, interpersonal interaction in terms of what we say and do with each other. They're represented, they're produced and reproduced in organizations in terms of our policies and our practices and our habits in terms of what we assume is the right way to do things. And finally, there is a whole sy systemic and uh, structural element to it. And all of it is held together by a dominant culture that is, ev that is in the representations that we see every day. So the question then becomes, what do we do about it? Oftentimes we think that the way to address and end racism is through mass mobilization, or we think about it in terms of the law and what should be passed in terms of eliminating and dismantling racism. And last, and this is what we mostly rely on, is that we think about racism as an individualized action that is based on intent, and that if we just shame and blame people enough, that that will end the system. What I wanna say is that this sets us up in a problematic dichotomy. We tend to fall into either or thinking. A person is either racist or not, there, uh, there was either intent, good intent, or bad intent, or we'd look at just the impact. We think of it either as individual or structural, but more importantly, we think about it as a division between good and bad people. We call people out, we shame and blame them, or we're silent around it. And finally, we either punish the people that we think are racist, or we celebrate the ways in which uh, people are resisting. But what do we do when it is the people that we work with, the people that we associate, our family members, our community members, the people who are on our teams, who have the internalized beliefs around it, who, where it shows up in terms of interpersonal interactions, where they are good people who are on our team, on our side, share our beliefs, and yet invariably say or do something where, that reproduces racism and impacts people in racist ways. So what I wanna offer is another way a way for dealing with racism where we do all make mistakes. If this were easy to fix, we would have done it by now. The only way to figure this out is by trial and error. We have to fail and learn, and we have to find forgiveness for when we do make mistakes. And finally, and this is the opportunity, this is the invitation, is how do we build relationships through this conflict? So I offer and teach a model of what I call calling in. So instead of calling people out, shaming and blaming them, how do we call them in? Call them into understanding and awareness of their behavior and their beliefs, call them in with empathy, curiosity, compassion, and finally, how do we call people into partnership so that we can solve this problem together? Because reinforcing the two camps is not gonna get us where we need to be. So if we think about dismantling racism on, in everyday work through calling in, it really is about conversations. It is about calling each other in, having those difficult conversations, but most importantly, it's about talking about racism, dismantling it, and building partnership at that intersection of the individual where our beliefs, behaviors, and actions show up, but that it intersects with the systems and organizations that we work in. So my question to you today is how are you building your everyday practice of calling in around race and power? Thank you.